iron, what does that mean when it comes to our, our inner circle? What does that mean? Brother sharpens brother. Yeah, but when it comes to your inner circle, like it's important to have an inner circle of close friends. What does that mean, iron sharpens iron? What is it telling you? Like it's basically if we, um, if we are together, then we can like help each other out and make each other have good, like do the, do the right choices. Yeah, and if you're a piece of iron, you need another piece of iron. You need somebody else like you. All right. I'm not saying they look like you. I'm saying they believe what you believe, right? As far as your biblical truths, your character, your values, your ethics, your morals. All right. Those, that's what I'm talking about there. And we need to make decisions with wise counsel. Like Mr. Sniper said, if you get into Proverbs 2018, Proverbs will tell you plans are established by wise counsel. So the thing I'll draw out there, it doesn't say plans are established by counsel. It says, what's the ad what's the additive there? What's the key word? By wise counsel. And if you take a step back, how are you gonna get wise counsel if you've surrounded yourself with the unwise, right? So friends matter, all right? Your inner circle absolutely matters. I learned this on in command. I had a staff, so I made, I owned all of the decisions that I had to make, and I had to make a lot of them. And I will tell you, in command, there's a lot of days that I made decisions about a lot of things, and I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know if it was the right decision. I didn't know it was going to turn out, all right. But I never, no, not once ever, stepped into a critical decision where I had not assembled my inner circle of staff, of Marines, officer, and enlisted alike that I trusted. They were experienced. They had expertise in whatever field we were going to get ready to make a decision on and I queried opinions all right and that's how you do it all right wise counsel all right next thing I learned and you need to be thinking about is relationships with other humans you need are you going to be a bridge builder or a bridge burner because I guarantee you this in in command or in, in any leadership position in life no matter really what it is you're gonna have to deal with people, all right? And they're not gonna look like you, they're not gonna talk like you, they're not gonna believe what you believe, but they may be the gateway to what you need, for what your organization needs. And there may be times when you're right, but does that matter sometimes? It may not matter. You may need to bite your tongue. You may need to learn to work the relationship out of love, right, um, in order to build bridges. I cannot tell you how many times when I look back on command, I was so thankful I wanted to burn a bridge. And I didn't. And I had to come back and walk across it at some point months down the road back to that person that maybe I had a disagreement with. Um, maybe I didn't like them. Whatever. Alright. But because I was a bridge builder, those relationships were in place for me and ultimately my organization, my, my squadron. Alright. Um, so bridge builder. Other things about people. Proverbs will teach you, be slow to, what? Judge. Proverbs 18, 17. The first one to plead his case seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. Jim, what does that mean to you? First guy that shows up seems right yeah. until the second guy shows up. Yep. You gotta wait, you gotta be patient. You gotta ask seek it out and not just listen to the first thing. Yeah. Guys, when you're leading an organization or really anything, you got to get the whole story. Dads, we got to get the whole story. All right. Most of the time, dad knows best though. All right. But get the whole story. The first guy to show up always seems like it's right and it's true until you hear the other half of it. I learned that when I had Marines get in trouble and we had to go through the non-judicial punishment process and you you have a feeling about it and then you hear the first side of the story that maybe the sergeant major brings in about how bad the marine is and then you get the whole story and maybe there's some more context there that maybe sheds a little bit more light on what really happened so be slow to judge also be slow to <coughs> anger okay the bible doesn't teach not to get angry it just says you need to be slow to that because what happens when we get emotional when we're trying to make decisions caleb what happens we don't fail, but when we're trying to make decisions and we have emotions raging through us, we're mad, we're angry, we're frustrated, and we're trying to make some critical decision, 
What happens? We make bad decisions. Well, we might make bad decisions. Our judgment's clouded. We may be less objective. So separating yourself out, and it's very difficult. I will tell you from personal experience, trying to separate my emotions from the business decision that needs to be made, all right? But something you need to strive for, and Proverbs would tell you, be slow to anger, be slow to judge. All right, here's one I learned, is you better be willing to put in the work, and you better be willing to dig to bedrock to find God's will for your life, all right? It takes work. We're not gonna, it's not magic. We're not gonna sit on the couch and we're gonna pray and all of a sudden the Lord's gonna say, oh, and here's, here's my will for your life. It takes work. And most of y'all know that, but you're gonna have to work at it. And here's what God says about having grit and determination in your life. Proverbs 24, 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. What does that mean to you guys? What, is that, what does he say in there? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. He's really making a comment about when it gets hard and you quit, you suck. That's what he's saying. All right? You need to be prepared as a Christian in the world. You got to live in the world. You got to operate in the world. You got to lead in the world. You can't separate yourself from it. You better be ready for some adversity. It's going to be challenging. It's going to require grit and determination out of you to really find out where God's will is. All right? And he makes a comment there about, hey, hope you're up for it. You better be because I'm going to be real disappointed when it gets hard and you quit. That's, that's what he's saying. So hopefully you're thinking that's a challenge, challenge accepted, okay? But what I take away from that is be prepared to do the work, all right? That's how you feel. That's right. Absolutely. All right, leadership, you gotta have, if you're gonna lead an organization, I learned you gotta have priorities. What does that mean to y'all to have priorities? It's hard to explain, but like to do the right thing first. Okay, that's that's sorta, to do the right thing first. Anybody else, what does it mean to have priorities? Something that you need to do before you do the other stuff. Absolutely, so here's the deal. You're gonna have not enough resources in most of your life to do all of the things that you want to do and maybe need to do so being a leader guys you need to learn how to rack and stack the priorities in your life what's what's the what's the most important thing and then what's the not most important thing i.e what have i got to get done today now and what can maybe get done next week rack and stack your priorities it will help you put the resources that you're not going to have enough of into the right spots at the right time all right and let's hear what proverbs says about that so Proverbs 24, 27, prepare your outside work, make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterwards build your house. So what is the proverb is saying there? What's the takeaway? Anybody? Do the hard things first. Do the hard do the things that matter first, right? So food matters. This matters. I'd be taking care of this before I'm building shelter, right? So kind of we got in our survival training with the seer guys you know there's priorities of work right what were those y'all remember when the seer instructors came out priorities of work in a survival situation so probably the most important thing you need to find is water yeah remember that priorities so proverbs says establish priorities paul had priorities remember when paul got put on a ship he was sailing to rome they got into a big storm ship was going to sink they came to Paul. What'd they do? How'd they keep the ship from sinking? They, they didn't throw Paul overboard. That was Jonah. Wrong guy. They threw the cargo overboard that they were taking to Rome because they realized, hey, my priority right now is not letting the ship sink. I better get rid of the weight. Get rid of it. All right. So good example there of priorities in the Bible there. All right. Second to last thing. You got to get super comfortable being uncomfortable. Y'all have probably heard that before, but that is so true, all right? At the Marine Corps, we would say Semper Gumby, right? Be prepared for everything. Probably don't really know what's going to happen tomorrow any more than you know what's going to happen today, but you need to be prepared to absorb the challenges. And let's hear what Proverbs says about that. 27.1, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what it may bring forth. What is he telling leaders there? What is he telling you as a leader? 
You don't have control. You don't have control, so you better not be sitting on your laurels on a Friday believing I can rest now because I know what's happening tomorrow. Because that's the moment that you're going to get that phone call at 3 a.m. from the boss. And he's going to say, hey, I'm sorry, your Marine's dead. Figure it out. All right? As an example. Okay? The minute that you're certain of the future, things are going to change. So I think as a leader, guys, Proverbs would teach you here and taught me that pray for the best, prepare, but you need to be prepared to pivot in life and in your job. You just don't know what's going to happen. So be prepared for what you think is going to happen, but also be prepared to pivot for what tomorrow may hold. And we're not going to boast about what that is because it's it's fruitless to do that because we just don't know, right? Okay, in my last lesson, all right, sorry, too many papers. Keep emotions out of leadership, which I kind of already covered. In Proverbs 29.11, 29.11 would say, a fool vents his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. So leadership, young men, is a serious business that you guys are going to be stepping into in the next 10, 15 years as you, as you develop. As a leader, emotions are going to cloud your judgment. Friendships will cloud your judgment. Preferential treatment, all right, because they're my buddy. That's an example. Being angry, that's an, ex that's an easy example, right? All of these things are going to cloud your judgment. Leaders need to be objective is what, one of the things I learned in command. I need to be able to make decisions despite the fact that we have a relationship and I know you and we're friends, all right? Despite the fact that you've made me angry, that may not matter to the decision, okay? So the man that can exclude his emotions is going to be clear-minded when he makes those decisions. All right, so those are just some of the lessons uh, I learned in command. And really, I felt like I learned all of those the day I gave up command after 27 months. I'm like, man, it would have been nice to have known this when I started. But the truth is, I did know it. And kind of one of the last last things I'll leave you with is I did know all those things because it is how I, I, I referenced Proverbs when I stepped into command as my bedrock for, hey, where am I going to go to find wisdom and how to lead these men and women? All right. And I did that because when I was your age, um, it's biblical truths are something that I committed to my life. It was something that I decided to um, seek after the Lord and it pay dividends later, not when I was 15, but when I was 42 and the Lord finally put me in a position where, um, hey, here's 300 men and women and 16 airplanes in one of our war fighting organizations. Okay, so uh, it paid off. So advice I'd give to you guys in closing, stay in the word, all right? Stay in the word. Seek knowledge and wisdom from God above all else, and you need to build a foundation in your life out of that. Start with biblical truths before you proceed on to anything later. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. All right. Secondly, is treat every life experience that you guys get to have as an opportunity, be it success or failure. It's an opportunity to grow. In the F-35 world or the F-18 world, Sniper and I know very well that what do we do after every flight? Debrief. We debrief. And probably many of you folks do that in the Border Patrol and the Marine Corps. We debrief, right? We have the mission, we execute, we debrief. We come back and we talk about sometimes what went right, because it's important to look at what went right. But a lot of times we focus on what didn't go per the plan or what went poorly so that we can do what? Make corrections so it doesn't happen again, right? All right. So treat every experience that you have. The thing that I, one of the things that I learned looking back at my life is all the way back to college and before when I couldn't get up in front of a group of humans and speak. Every opportunity was an opportunity to grow and sharpen a skill, right? Leadership, leadership is not something you're born with. There's maybe a handful of folks that have been born on this planet that were natural born leaders. They had it. None of, none of those humans are in this group, all right? Leadership is a skill. It's a skill got to refine it you've got to practice it you've got to in order to be a good leader a moral leader you got to have a foundation in some sort of truth in our case biblical truths right so you got to practice 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 it's repetition it's failure and then it's debriefing failures so that we can learn from those and not repeat those in the future okay and the last thing is that when God says go when he stirs up a spirit in you and you're thinking that this is what the Lord's will is, you got to go. All right, commit, 
commit to going before you've got confirmation that it's the right decision. The Lord will let you know, all right? But if you wait for confirmation on certain decisions, then you're probably never gonna make them, all right? So um, it's kind of the three things. All right, last two things I'll leave you with. Two scriptures that kind of guided me on this journey of command and leaning in the Marine Corps that kind of have stuck with me since I was little is guard your heart, Proverbs, again, it's Proverbs, Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. So you probably have read that, you maybe have glossed over it, but here's kind of my takeaway. It's guard, not you guard. 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 Guard is a directive term. When y'all think of a guard, think like Roman, Roman, a Roman guard or centurion. What do you think of in your head? What's, what's the picture there? Like a, a man in armor with weapons. Yeah, we think of a skinny guy that's maybe got like, you know, a plastic sword that doesn't really know what he's doing that probably works an eight hour shift. Is that what we're thinking when we think of guard? What what do we what what do you have in your mind? Metal sword and yeah, he's probably got strong muscles. Looks like mm, I don't think I want to mess with that guy. He'll probably kick my butt. Might kill me. Um, guard is also an eight hour eight hour work day, right? Is that true? Twenty four seven. There's a lot there in that word. Guard your heart. You better be prepared 24 7 actively guarding what's coming into your life who are, this is why who you surround yourself with coming back to that it matters you got to be active in that you can't be passive all right guard is a thing you let your guard down for one minute what can happen anything, anything. and we don't know what's going to happen right because the lord says that you don't know what tomorrow holds so guard's a pretty strong word there guard your heart it's, it's critical or it determines the course of your life. So think about that. And then the last thing, when you're getting to a leadership role, I think if you really want to know how to how to do it right, Proverbs 4.25 will tell you, look straight ahead, fix your eyes on what lies before you, mark out a straight path for your feet, and stay on the safe path. So when it gets into look straight ahead, he's telling you, hey man, figure out what matters and keep your eye on that get distracted good luck but there's a lot in there right so keep your eye on what matters stay focused that's a hard thing to do all right stay focused fix your eyes on what lies before you mark out a straight path all right that means work has to be done that means hey you got to know where you're going and then you got to do some work in planning and how am I going to get there how am I going to mitigate the risks how am I going to deal with the adversity, right? How am I going to deal with the unknowns? That's, there's a lot of work there, all right? So buckle up and be ready for that. And then stay on the safe path, okay? So those are kind of two of the two, two of the scriptures that kind of guided me in command. Guard my heart, right? And then ride that vision for the unit. Fix my eyes on that, and that's where we're going. And I'm going to try to stay focused on that as much as I can, all right? So those are some of my lessons learned uh, from command. And that's really it. Any questions? Anything? Yes, sir. You uh, elaborated talked about humility and grace when you made a decision that wasn't quite right. Absolutely. Uh, humbleness, humility, and grace are all <coughs> critical components I found in leading other leading other men. You got you got to have those. Um, uh, humbleness will serve you well, <coughs> young men, anywhere that you go. Uh, in fact. Kind of glad. Thanks for bringing that up. I kind of glossed over this. <coughs> a lot of papers and a lot of wind. All right, where'd I go? Where'd I go? All right, I'll find it later. Um, anyway, <coughs> Proverbs Proverbs speaks to humbleness in that it basically says, "Hey, when you're in the presence of the king, don't exalt who you are or what you do." All right basically let the king do that for you so what he's saying is hey man when you're working for a unit when you're working for an organization let's be humble in front of those superior ranking folks that are around you let them exalt you to positions if they deem fit otherwise keep your head down and uh do what you're doing but yeah humility and grace uh i had to have a lot of grace with marines because they screw up and then ultimately as the commander uh you're responsible for adjudicating hey how how are we going to punish this marine or not and knowing when to have grace and extend it um, 
is a difficult decision. So some Marines deserved it, some Marines don't. But realize, do we? Do any of us deserve grace? But we get it, right? So as a leader, this is where maybe it went for me. It was helpful to take the emotion out of it because there were times when I extended grace to a Marine that I felt deserved a second chance. I wanted to have a second chance. I could afford to give it. And then there were times I didn't based on, I guess, the severity of the situation, right? But um, I tried to separate my emotions out of that so I can make the most clear-headed decision for the, for the business, I guess, is how I would go about that. Does that answer? Yeah, no, it's just the example, because that's the stuff you said, all the stuff that these boys are facing today. Yeah. And you're faced with a consequence. Sometimes just lick your wounds and admit that you're yep. that trying to get out of it rather than just ex absorbing Absolutely. a shotgun blast of chest because I messed up. Yeah. Let me move on. Because the, it's kind of... Instead of prolonging the argument and Absolutely. trying to state your case, it's like, okay, I, I messed up, and, and having that, that that humility to say that I'm not, I wasn't right. Yeah. So that, that to me, for these young men, is is, is a learning lesson. It probably happens daily, even yep. with their siblings, especially with their parents. Yep. I agree. What else? Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I got one. Yes. Uh, kind of along the same lines. Yeah, I did. I made, uh, you know, every day we, you make decisions uh, for the unit. And um, I think in the instances when, I think I made a lot of wrong decisions, to be frank. Uh, to your point, having to come back to the table to your staff and say, hey, I think I this is not right. I, I think we got this one wrong. Ultimately, I got this wrong. Um, having to come back to the table and, and uh, own it, I think is step one. But uh, I think early on in my command tour, I did beat myself up over, agonized over either not knowing or like, man, that was, that was, did not turn out how I thought it was going to turn out. And the cost of that was probably my Marines, right? So maybe we put effort into something that produced no fruit. Maybe it produced bad fruit, um, whatever the case. But um, I kind of learned that it, I had to just, once the decision's made, good or bad, you have to do what you alluded to. It's like, if it's bad, like own it. And uh, like, yep, this was not good. Come back to the table. And like, if, if people, um, I had some, I had a situation where I made a couple decisions about bringing in a uh, inspection team to take a look at my maintenance department. And I'm telling you, that decision didn't go over well with the men that I led. They were not appreciative of that decision. It was the right decision on the business side. Um, I needed to know what was going on in the maintenance department at that time for a lot of specific reasons. So I think they kind of felt like trust got violated, things of that nature between the commander and some of the senior leaders in the maintenance department. But at the end of the day, it was the right call because I had a culture down there that I was trying to get into the roots of to root it out. And um, I just had to work really hard to tell myself because it's people business at the end of the day, right? I had to work really hard to convince myself daily that it's a business decision and I've got a responsibility. Maybe this is another learning point for you guys. In a leadership position, you've got a responsibility to the business, in this case, the Marine Corps, to make the right decision. Emotions don't matter. So I kind of looked at it that way. Like, what's the Marine Corps want me to do here? What's my responsibility? My responsibility is to be prepared for combat, execute safe flight operations off of this ship. And that's what we're gonna do. And um, from that respect, um, but that's hard to remind yourself that um, it was, those decisions were correct despite what there's adversity amongst the folks that under, are underneath you may not agree with you. Priorities. Priorities, yeah. And that is me. another lesson learned I had to remind myself of in that regard is like you're the leader for a reason and you are, until you're fired, you're in charge. <laughs> so one lesson I walked away with was while everyone will give you advice and help you come to a conclusion about making a decision, there's nobody left holding the bag but you. You're, and you need to own that, because that's, that's part of being a leader, guys, is if you're the leader, like, man, 
Everything good, bad, or indifferent is your fault. And you better own it. All right? And that's how you need to approach life. Um, but it's a hard thing to do when you've got the grumblings beneath you that are not in your seat. They do not see things how you see things from the perspective that you see them, nor do they have the responsibility and the weight of those decisions. So does that answer the question, sort of? Yeah. Thank you. Anything else for Mr. Aaron? All right, everybody stand up, give him a round of applause. All right. Put your arms straight up in the air. So I want you guys to be thinking about a couple things. First of all, some of you may think, well, I'm never going to be a commander of a, an F-35 squadron. Well, you're right, maybe you aren't. But guess what? What Mr. Stroke said is exactly right, that you are going to be a leader in some form or fashion. Maybe just leading your family as a father, as a husband. And so that's, thank you, Bronnie. That's very important uh, that you need to develop those skills. And so he shared a lot of great wisdom. And Stroke, thank you so much. Here's a, here's a Valor hat for you. Thank you, sir. Uh, but I want you young men to really internalize what he's shared. And, and two things that I'll emphasize, because we live in a society that we have many what? What was that thing that just flew over? Distraction. It was a distraction, <laughs> exactly. My seven-year-old said, Daddy, look, you know, it's a distraction. We all, you know, as you get older, you're going to have these, these phones, right? Distractions. Girls. Girls. I mean, all sorts of distractions, right? So it's important that you don't be distracted and, and to focus on the truth, the bedrock. What did he share? Where, where can you find it? In Scripture, right? And there are going to be a lot of things that are put out there. Hey, hey, young man. Hey, guard, look at this. Hey, Braun, look at this. This is the cool way to, to do this. You go to Scripture. You balance things with Scripture. Here's a man who was a, a commander of an F-35 squadron, and he based his truths, his leadership, on Scripture. Straight out of Proverbs. Okay, so internalize that. The other thing is adversity, right? So who deals better with adversity, your mom or your dad? <laughs> Don't ask mom, but dad does. Okay. <laughs> so I'll tell you right now, ye, each of us needs to seek that adversity. Maybe being uncomfortable in certain situations, doing things you don't want to do. I mean, how many, how many, uh, how many of you young men stood up the whole time Mr. Stroke was talking? Maybe one. You were probably more uncomfortable than the people sitting down, right? All right? So you are also, tr you're, right now, you're training yourself to deal with adversity, doing things that are just a little bit harder. Now, you have to be careful with that, right? Because along with that will quickly come the P word. Pride, right? Oh, yeah, I did it because I'm tougher than him. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing the things that are difficult because you're training yourself to prepare for that situation where maybe you have to do something that's harder. Maybe you have to go without sleep. Maybe you have to go without food. Maybe you have to go without that comfort of even sleeping in a bed, right? And so you guys need to be training yourselves that right now as a young man. Because I'll tell you right now, the ladies, and ladies, I am so thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my daughters. They are an important part of God's creation. But they are going to look to you when things get tough. So you need to be tough. All right? And that's exactly what he said. So thanks again, Stroke. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to gather things up right now. We're going to follow Philly. Uh, do you want to go to the cauliflower now? And we'll do cabbage last? Um, I think I got off. The cauliflower thing, we're going we're gonna to skip it. No worries. So we're... we're probably gonna, I have my guy go and cut a couple boxes right now. We're not making a big group right there.